Hey YouTube viewers, this is Donnie Smith and welcome to this video series that is designed to help you pass the ASE exam. Now this uh, video series is specifically for the, the paint refinish and uh, what we're going to do is we'll go through the task and give you the knowledge to pass a test. What this is not, this is not really your prep test type book, you know, it's not just test questions. You know, if you want that, there is a link down the, in the description, you know, you can get more information about that. What this is, this basically goes through all the tasks that you will need to know to pass the test. In this video, we're going to talk about Paint Refinish B9, which is a mixed primer, primer surfacers, or primer sealers. Now, the first thing I want to talk about when we're talking about primers is 1K and 2K. You know, what does the K stand for, and what does this mean? Well, the K basically just stands for component, one component or two component. So wherever they came up with this was in another country where they spell component with a K. And that's what confused me for a long time because I didn't know what the K stood for. I knew what it meant. I knew that it was one component and two component, but I didn't realize that the K stood for component. Because, you know, here in the U.S. we spell component with a C. But where they, where they came up with this, you know, it's spelt with a K. And that's what it means, one component or two component. So what does one component and two component mean? It either means that the product's catalyzed or not catalyzed. One component products, 1K products, are not catalyzed. Two component products, they are catalyzed. They have a catalyst that you have to mix with it. So one component uh, products might be like a, a lacquer primer you, where you have the primer and you have a reducer. Now that's something else that you don't want to get confused is the reducer or the thinner that you use to to thin something to make it sprayable. That is not considered a component. So you might have two products and it still be a one component or you might have a 2K product where you have the primer servicer, you have the catalyst and then you have a reducer. Even though there's three products, that's still just two components. So if you're using a 1K product that does not use a catalyst, there's going to be no chemical change. It's basically just reduced where it's sprayable, and then it's, the, the, it's going to dry by the evaporation of the solvents. Now if it's a 2K product, a 2K primer, that has a catalyst in it, there's going to be a chemical change. Basically that primer and that catalyst, they, whenever they're mixed together, they basically have a chemical change and make a new product. It's kind of like a body filler. You got the body filler. If you uh, let that air dry, it'll get harder, but it'll never fully harden because it doesn't have the other product. You take the, the body filler and the hardener, the cream hardener, you mix it together. It has that chemical change, and that is a new product. It fully hardens. So if you're using a 2K primer or two, any 2K product, you have to use the, the hardener in order to get that chemical change. So let's talk about 1K primers. You know, lacquer primer has been around for years. That was one of the first primers that I'm aware of. And uh, basically it's just a primer and you use thinner to reduce it. Now the problem with that is, is there's a lot of thinner, a lot of solvents in this primer. So a lot of what you spray onto the surface is evaporating off. A couple problems with that. One is that's, that's a lot of VOCs that's uh, being released into the atmosphere and that's what uh, they're really concerned about. How much of that stays on the car and how much of that is evaporating off. A lot of the high solid products we have today, you know, more is staying on the car and less is evaporating off. And the second problem with that is if you spray something and you have, a, you know, a lot of mills on there and uh, three quarters of what you sprayed on there evaporates off, you're going to have a lot of shrinkage. You know, the primer that's left on there is going to shrink down in the sand scratches. And, and th But we do have some advanced 1K products that work really well. Uh, today we have the UV primers, which is ultraviolet primer. That's basically just sprayed on. It does not mix with the catalyst, and it's dried by the sun, or they have special lamps that will dry them. This primer works real well. It dries really fast, uh, but it may be more expensive. They also have waterborne primers that works well. And it's higher solid. You know, a lot of what, a lot more of what you spray on the car stays on the car, and uh, less evaporation, so less shrinkage, less VOCs. But both of these primers may be more expensive than your, you know, like your lacquer primer or even a lot of your 2K products that we have available today. And self etch primer that that is for corrosion protection, and it can it comes in 1K and 2K products. You can get in, get it in either 1K or 2K. Your 2K primers is like your urethanes, epoxies, and self etch you can get in 1K or 2K, but it is higher solids. You're going to have less uh, evaporation than the lacquer primer, and it also has that chemical change because it has the catalysts. Uh, urethane is probably one of the most used uh, primers today. 
although a lot of shops are moving towards like the uh, UV and the waterborne. But urethane's been around, it, it works well, it's high solids, and you have less shrinkage. Then we have the epoxies, like for corrosion protection, for bare metal. That is always a, a two-part product, 2K product, and it works really well. Now, regardless of uh, if it's 1K or 2K, they're going to need to be mixed together, either with, you know, your product, with a catalyst, with a reducer or thinner, or, you know, it may take a mixture of all three. So every product has a mixing ratio. You know, for example, it may say four parts of a primer surfacer to one part catalyst. So basically what that is, is, is if you're using ounces, that's going to be four ounces of primer mixed with one ounce of catalyst, and you pour that in a cup, mix it together with a stir stick. Now they also have paint cups that, that are real helpful. They have the measurements on there. You know, they have like four to one, three to one, two to one. They have all these different ratios on there, so you can just find the correct ratio and mix it together, stir it up, and get it ready to spray. Now, if you're using a uh, computerized system, for example, if you uh, are using PPG's uh, products or DuPonts, you know, in, in their system, you can type in the, uh, the product that you're using and tell it how many ounces of sprayable ounces that you want, and then it'll tell you exactly how, of how much of each product to put in. Or if you have just a paint scale, you can use that. You can pour in the desired amounts to, and weigh it. Induction time is basically when it, you know, like you have these chemicals, like it's going to be with a two-part product. Some chemicals are, de are designed to be together for a little bit before you use them. And it's, it's usually with epoxies. And they're designed to, uh, to pour in your cup, mix it up, and they have to set for an induction time. You know, like uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it says on the technical data sheet. But they need to be together before you use it. So, for example, if you're using epoxy and on the technical da data sheet it says induction time 15 minutes. That means you got to pour the, the two parts together, mix them up let it set for 15 minutes and then go spray. And this is usually just on epoxies, but look on your technical data sheet. And that's one reason it's important to read your technical data sheet so you'll be aware of these type of things. The pot life is something else that will be on a technical data sheet. And this is basically how long do you have to work with this product? Because once you mix these, uh, these chemicals together, they start doing the chemical change. And you only have so long before they start gelling and getting hard inside of your cup. Now some products have a long pot life and some have very short depending on the product. Some products are designed for uh, production, you know, like uh, fast paced where you get it on and 30 minutes it's ready to sand. Well the pot life might be really short. So if you leave some primer or clear coat or whatever that has a really fast short pot life laying in the cup over lunch, you know, it may be hardening the gun, make it hard to clean. So always look on your technical data sheet and, and look for the pot life and see if it has an induction time and things like that. Okay, I just have a couple of short uh, questions for you. Just kind of prepare you for the Technician A, Technician B, because that's what a, lo a lot of the ASE is on. And remember a tip to this is just answer Technician A, true or false, answer Technician B, true or false, and then answer the question. So, Technician A says all primers require a catalyst. Technician B says self-etching primer is available in 1K or 2K. And of course, the answer to that is B only. Not all primers require catalysts, not if it's 1K. That's only your 2K products. And like we mentioned earlier in the video, you know, self-etching is available in 1K or 2K. All right, one more for you. Uh, technician A says primer may be mixed in a mixing cup. Technician B says primer may be mixed with a computerized mixing system. Who is correct? And of course, we talked about mixing cups, and, or if you have a mixing system, you can use either one. So, both A and B are correct in this question. It is my goal to keep these videos short, so that's all we're going to cover in this video. Just give you little chunks at a time, let you absorb, absorb that, and then you can watch the next video. Down below is a link to the test prep books that I have, but also there's a link that'll take you to all these videos if you're wanting to go through more than one video at a time and take you through the entire playlist. So, uh... Uh, be sure and check that out to, to uh, go through the ones that I've already uploaded. And as they become available, they'll also be put on this site as well. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this helps. And uh, good luck with your ASE exam.